Hey, Ricky. Ain't you got one of them uh, semi-hollow body guitars like the Kings of the Leon? How come you never played that one? Hello, Richard from BudgetGuitarist.com. And today we're going to examine the humble Epiphone ES339. This is the guitar Tony was referring to. This is the only semi-hollow body electric guitar that I own. I have no idea what year it is. I know that it has got Grover tuners that are Clusen style. I know that when I bought it, there was a lot of fretware and I had to do a level crown on it. So now it plays pretty good, but it's got two issues. Issue number one, there's a buzz. And I gotta track that down. Issue number two, the pickups are terrible. Okay, let me rephrase that. If you buy one of these, I have no idea these days what kind of pickups Epiphone is shipping with the 339. But this particular model, which my guess would be it's about five years old, this particular model, I think these are called Alnico Classic, and they really do sound muddy. They sound like mud. The very first video I ever shot for this channel was with my Epiphone Les Paul, and I complained that the Pro Buckers in it sounded like mud. In reality, because I've had all the pickups like in all the different guitars, I think that when I was talking about mud sounding pickups, it was the Alnico Classics or Classic Alnico or whatever the heck these things are called. These really are muddy. Now, if you buy one of these and you wanna play jazz with it, you could probably get away with it, I guess. It's got a full tone that has a lot of lower frequencies, but it doesn't really have the, the mid-frequency definition that I'm looking for. So when I'm playing with a little bit of gain, I want to be able to hear the individual strings. And if I can't, if it all just sounds like a big woof, then I would call that muddy. So I'm going to fix the buzzing problem. Then I'm going to do a pickup swap. But first, we're going to fix the buzz or see if we can fix it. And then we're going to uh, we're going to listen to this guitar through my bass breaker amp and my Vintage 30 speaker. I'm going to record it. Then I'm going to do a pickup swap. And in place of this Alnico classic mud thingy, I'm going to put the old tried and true, the Seymour Duncan Pearly Gates. Seymour Duncan Pearly Gates was my favorite pickup. And it might still be. Uh, I really like the Pro Bucker. I really want to play a burst bucker, which is what the pro bucker is supposed to be a copy of. But I have to say too, honestly, one of my favorite pickups these days is the Shaw Bucker One that I put in my PRS S2. I'm getting ahead of myself though. Let's look a little bit at what this guitar actually is. So the Gibson ES335 is very famous. It was made famous by guys like Larry Carlton and a million other players. A lot of jazz fusion guys played it. A lot of rock guys played it. And so I always thought, well, it'd be kind of neat to own one of those. But when I saw this guy used for $199 and I played it, I was like, you know, these things, this is like the perfect size, I think. And, you know, doing a little bit of research about it, I realized the 339 is like a smaller body version of the 335. But to me, this is like the perfect size. So when I play an actual 335, it seems huge to me. It feels like I'm playing a jumbo guitar or something. I really prefer the 339 size. But let's get on to the buzz. I normally run this wire under my t-shirt, so all you see is the microphone up here. But in this case, I left it out because I really want to put the mic closer to the guitar so that you can hear the buzz that I'm talking about, okay? So... Let me see if I can capture this. Okay, on the high E string, hear that buzz? It's like a, I'm calling it a buzz. It's more like a rattle. So now that you heard it, let me fix this. Okay, so how do you track down buzz on a guitar? Whether it's a Epiphone Les Paul, Gibson Les Paul, ES 335, 339, what are the steps? Well, one of the most common things that buzzes is these nuts up here, right? So if these guys get loose, they'll cause a buzzing, a rattling sound. 
part of the problem with a rattling sound on your guitar is because the instrument is designed to transfer vibrations you can't really tell sometimes is it coming from up here or is it coming from down here in some cases the rattling sound that you're hearing could be the sound of the string like bouncing off of some of the frets i can already tell you that's not what this is but how do you decide whether it's up here something rattling up here or something rattling down here well the last time I took the strings off this guy, I tightened all these nuts, like pretty solid. I don't think it's here, but how do I rule it out? Well, I'm gonna kind of lean over the guitar so you can so you can hear. One way to do it is if you fret, like at the very highest fret or close to it, and play the strings. Sometimes you can hear the, uh, the rattle. And then if you play those same strings over here, if you don't hear the rattle, well, that'll tell you which side of the guitar it's on. But assuming that doesn't work, and also because I have prior knowledge of what's wrong with this thing, I'm going to show you what's wrong with it. These saddles right here, okay? On a Gibson Les Paul, or at least on my Gibson Les Pauls, which were made in, in 2013, the way the saddle works is the screw goes in through a hole on one side and the end goes into a hole on the other side. Whereas on this guitar, the entire assembly fits right down in. There's a lot of room for this screw right here to rattle around. Let me, uh, let me bring this closer so you can see what I mean. This guy right here, this screw, this basically pops right up. There's nothing holding this down. Now, normally there's a little thin wire that goes across all of these. And the point of the wire is to hold all of these screws down. And in this particular case, I don't have the wire. So I could try to get the wire, but really the issue is just bad bridge design. So if I buy a better bridge, like uh, one from a Gibson Les Paul, and I stick it on here, that's probably going to take care of the rattle. But in the meantime, what I can do to diminish the rattle is I can make sure that I've got all these screws pushed down as far as possible. And then I can also make sure, let me get my fingers out of the way, that I'm tightening these screws up just a little bit to make sure that they're not like slack right that they're not like rattling around in there because that's what I'm hearing one thing you can do for sure to determine whether that's happening or not is you can you can hold down the screw with your thumb and then play the string this is what you call natural relicking pretty beat up maybe I'll replace both of these at the same time look how dirty this thing is oh wait I don't care that's right so anyway, that's how you take care of rattle. Not too difficult. So now, let's hear this thing, shall we? Okay, so I have got, I'm using this pickup and this pickup alone. The treble is turned all the way up. It's not coil tapped, so humbucker mode. I'm going into the Fender bass breaker with basically the medium gain uh, channel, the medium gain input, I should say, and everything's at noon except for the master. I don't have that at noon because it'd be too loud. I am sending the bass breaker into the orange 1x12 vintage 30 cabinet, which sounds amazing. I love it. And I'm recording it with a, uh, SM, a Shure SM57, and I've got that thing about an inch away from the grill cloth, so it's not right up against it. I'll record a couple of riffs and um, then I'll have some commentary, then I'll swap the pickup.
So what I'm hearing, and I don't know if this will come across with the microphone on YouTube, but in the room, what I'm hearing is just a, it almost sounds like fuzz. It's really hard to pick out some of these individual notes. Like in that case, I can barely hear the high E string. Actually, I can't hear it at all. Okay, so now, just for reference sake, let me grab another guitar and demonstrate. So this is not a fair comparison, obviously. It's a, it's a better guitar. This is the uh, Shaw Bucker, Fender Shaw Bucker 1 which is basically designed to be kind of like a pearly gates kind of pickup is an Alnico to lower output pickup somewhere in the seven to eight K range neighborhood, right? Let's see. So here's what this guy sounds like. Hear how you can hear that, that high E string. I hope that comes across on YouTube because in the room it's night and day difference. And I think it's more the pickup than the actual guitar. Again, not a fair comparison really. But once we put a pearly gates in that red guitar, I think that we're gonna hear a difference. So uh, let's do that. So 
there you go. This was a lot of work. That's why I'm not wearing the, uh, the lapel microphone right now. I thought I'd just kind of sum it up here at the end, just me and you with the, with the iPhone, you know, audio, the, the microphone built in the iPhone, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm pretty happy with this. It looks weird, which I absolutely love, but this, uh, this Pearly Gates in the Bridge really brought this guitar alive. Is so so if you have one of these 339s, if you're playing jazz with it or you're playing anything where you're playing clean, you know, maybe the use of the EQ pedal you can get it sounding pretty good. If you want to do classic rock or, or rock, anything like that, I really would recommend a pickup upgrade. And honestly, any Elnick O2 pickup would be an improvement. This is the Pearly Gates. Of course, we also like the Pro Buckers here at uh, budgetguitarist.com and we also like the Shaw Bucker, the one and the two. Pound for pound, easiest pickup to get hold of. Uh, Pearly Gates probably still remains my favorite. I mean the Pro Buckers, try buying them. Uh, it's weird, you can only buy them like you can only buy a pair and sometimes they're available, sometimes they aren't. There's weird black market ones on eBay. The old Seymour Duncan Pearly Gates, you can't go wrong. And anyway, thank you very much. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing or leaving a comment or clicking the like button especially. And I will see you again next Friday at 5.